The earth is crawling with life. Worms, acari, springtails, centipedes, bacteria, and many other species still yet to be discovered. All of this busy world tirelessly moves between the roots of plants and the mycelium of mushrooms that weave beneath our feet a dense and interwoven network. Fungi appeared 450 million years ago and have colonized all terrestrial and aquatic environments. It's thought that without them, the first plants could not have conquered dry land. Plants and fungi have been partners for a long time. Here, we have an incredibly diverse range of decomposers, degrading fungi, which represent 40% of the forest's biodiversity. They break down tree trunks, branches, and dead leaves. And thanks to that decomposing activity of degrading, they feed the soil, where the mycorrhizal fungi absorb the elements necessary for tree growth. Seps, Amanita muscaria, chanterelles, russuli, girol, milk cap fungi, boles, and many others, because the family of mycorrhizal fungi is large. They are the fruit of underground organisms called mycelia, a network of filaments that explore vast surfaces in search of food. Microbiologist at the French Enri Research Centre, Francis Martin studies how plants benefit from underground ecosystems. Here we have a very nice sep. It's probably connected via a mycelium system underground to this young oak. Here, it's spectacular. You can see the mycorrhizal root lightly colored red, and then we have one here, orange, probably another mycorrhizal fungus installed on the root system. So this oak is interacting with dozens of different symbiotic fungi, forming mycorrhizal structures with different forms and colors, with probably different functions. One of the essential functions of these sleeve-like structures is to protect the roots of plants from springtails, roundworms, and other tiny little creatures that seek to eat them. The other function is to weave a dense network of filaments, uniting fungal mycelia and plant roots. This network bond prepares the soil as it contains nutrients necessary for both plants and fungi. What is surprising is that the health of this forest surrounding us depends on this little structure we call mycorrhiza, symbiosis between plants and fungi. Through mycorrhiza, fungi supply plants with rare minerals, like phosphorus and nitrogen, which they capture in the soil along with other nutrients. In exchange, the fungi receive sugars from plant photosynthesis, which, not having chlorophyll, they can't make themselves. Laboratory observation by confocal microscope allows us to understand the symbiotic fusion of the mycelium filaments and plant roots. Here, we're in the soil, the network of mycorrhizal fungi. All these green filaments colonize the whole of the root surface in red and end up by forming a mycorrhiza cap here in green. Here we can clearly see the fungi filaments which surround the root, forming a kind of sock. And then this network of filaments which penetrate the root and burrow between the cells to the heart of the root.
Through this fusional connection with the mycorrhiza, plants make close and fertile bonds with many fungal mycelia and with very many and varied colonies of bacteria. In green are the bacteria that jump, twitch, and run along the highways of fungal mycorrhizal filaments. This allows the bacteria to move a long way, which they couldn't do without the fungus. The bacterial population that proliferate in the soil are to plants what intestinal microbes are to humans. Two plants have similar relations with the bacteria which surround them as we do to our own. Soil is like a digestive tube. There is flora in the soil made of microorganisms and the plant is able to search out and select useful bacteria for itself. Useful especially to improve soil fertility, but also useful to protect itself from diseases and climatic changes. To appreciate the influence of bacteria on the development of pulses, like for example corn or beans, the French NRI Centre has built an entirely automised experimental platform. Plant development is measured in highly controlled conditions. Lionel Rangard and his team grow corn plots in pots filled with soil where the number and diversity of bacteria is precisely dosed. Through very high definition cameras, the pockets of bacteria are easy to quantify and qualify in the images. Here we truly discover the root of the plant, and on that root, if we look closely, we can see little balls called nodes. In these nodes are millions of bacteria which are raised by the plant, and in return, these bacteria feed the plant because they are capable of capturing atmospheric nitrogen, nitrogen in the air, and transform it in a way that the plant can assimilate it. It's a win-win partnership. The plant feeds the bacteria, and the bacteria feed the plant. The more variety and quantity of bacteria, the more prosperous the plants. The shape and dimension of the pockets vary according to the type of plant. In the same way that the mycorrhiza secrete hormones to attract fungal mycelia, the root nodes secrete hormones to attract bacteria. Once the bacteria are enclosed in the nodes or capsules of the roots, the plant modifies them. They change shape, grow longer, and their metabolism alters. Instead of feeding on diverse substances, the encapsuled bacteria now only feed on atmospheric nitrogen, which they turn into nitrogen the plant can assimilate as a fertilizer. At Inra France, we have shown that if the microbial diversity is reduced in the soil, plant development is reduced. We've also shown that if fertilizer is added to the soil where there is less biodiversity, the plant still won't develop as well as it would if there was more biodiversity. So if we compare fertilizer to biodiversity, it's better to have a more biodiversified soil than to add fertilizer. These win-win partnerships between plants and bacteria are already used in agriculture, especially for pulse cultures, and that allows us to bring nitrogen in a natural way and limit the use of chemical fertilizers. In agricultural systems which are poorer, less fertile, notably in Africa, this simply allows agriculture to happen, to develop plants where they couldn't survive before because the soils weren't fertile enough. And one of the first applications is the development of the Great Green Wall in South Sahel which has allowed a whole zone to be reforested, limiting the expansion of the desert.
In the heart of the forest, there are thousands of species of mushrooms interacting with the trees. It's a permanent dialogue. Unfortunately, in the farm just beside it, massive use of pesticides has eliminated all microbial life. The plants are alone and no longer talk. It's completely silent. For the first time in the history of industrial farming, harvests of cultivated crops have stopped increasing. Confronted with environmental constraints and the limits of selection, our agriculture is at a dead end. A new biological approach offers a new perspective for progress, one that remains to be fully explored. Hopefully in the future, mycorrhizal symbiosis and nitrogen-fixing symbiosis will be developed by humankind to help plants adapt to climate change. The discoveries over the past few years have considerably improved our vision of the plant world. The closer we look at them, the more plants become familiar to us. Perhaps one day we'll stop seeing them as objects that can be infinitely cut, exploited and transformed, and see them for what they are, precious allies without which we would be lost. <laughs>